when it comes to uh, power based uh, questions uh, there are different uh, varieties of questions and usually students uh, tell that um, uh, the different varieties of questions are scattered in different places so uh, like how to deal with uh, questions based on uh, power of an engine how to deal with uh, questions based on power of motor or power of a pump which is um, mm, pumping up water from one level to uh, another level how to deal with uh, different uh, scenarios when it comes to uh, mainly uh, pumps motors and uh, engines so what i thought when all these are scattered in different places i'll put all of them together and give you a concise um, uh, uh, review points or theory points which you can uh, make note and use it in different varieties of uh, power based questions when it comes to engines motors and uh, pumps so let's see how different scenarios can be dealt with i will give you uh, all the problems converted into small finer theory points itself so that you can make use of these um, small points and you should be able to deal with 100% of the problems when it comes to power of engine power of uh, motors power of pumps and uh, so on okay so let's get started on our discussion i'll quickly uh, take you through the different uh, points which i have made out of problems so you can uh, get benefited out of uh, these discussions while you are going to solve problems related to power uh, scenarios right so let's take up different uh, points so first one is uh, a scenario where uh, <clears throat> there is a motor or some engine which is connected to the cable of a lift so the diagram that you see is a lift inside which there might be some people standing and the cable is attached to the lift and connected to this cable somewhere on the top is a engine or a motor which is going to uh, take the lift up or down why are the cable so in this scenario there can be different varieties so i have taken the case of a constant velocity for discussion here but i'll tell you how to approach for different varieties as well when it comes to um, cable lifting lifts uh, variety types so what i have taken here is there is a cable inside which there are some people standing let m be the total mass of the lift as well as the people everyone standing inside put together the total mass is m and let's say this is being pulled up with a constant velocity v so if this is being pulled up with a constant velocity v then the net force on the arrangement must be zero because acceleration is zero then we can write tension in the cable will be equal to uh, mg you will additionally add if there are any frictional forces which has been mentioned in the question so they might be uh, saying that there is a friction force of some 1000 newton which is acting on the lift so in that case Uh, to the weight of the entire arrangement you will add uh, the frictional forces which the tension of the cable has to overcome so from there you will get the tension value now this equation will get modified if the lift is going to be accelerating so if the lift is going to be accelerating you will write t minus mg minus the frictional forces will be equal to total mass into acceleration if it is accelerating uh, case but if it is moving with constant velocity case then you will get the tension using this relationship now once you get the tension then you can write power of the motor or engine to be t into v assuming that the engine is 100% efficient in performing the work so if it is not 100% efficient how to deal with it i'll be telling you a bit later so uh, for now whatever discussions are happening assume that the engine or pump is 100% uh, efficient if the efficiency is something different i'll tell you how to deal with it so um, all the discussions for now are based on 100% efficiency so in that case power of the engine or motor should be tension in the cable times whatever is the velocity of the arrangement right so that's point number 1 now let's go to point number 2 of where um, a pump is uh, uh, pumping up water so if you look at uh, the arrangement here so the scenario is there is a uh pump which is shown in the diagram and that is pumping up water slowly from one level to another uh, level 
so the another level is at a height h above the uh, base level so maybe from a well the pump is uh, pumping up water or from a uh, sump at ground level a pump is uh, pumping water to a overhead tank something of that scenario but we are assuming that in this case the pump is slowly pumping water up to a height of h and let us assume that m is mass of the water which is pumped up in some time t since it is slowly pumped note i have used uh, work energy theorem and i have written work done by the pump on the water plus work done by gravity on the water that should be equal to change in kinetic energy and since this water is being slowly pumped we are going to assume that when the water is at the base level its velocity is zero and eventually when it reaches the top level over the at a height h above there also the velocity is zero a change in kinetic energy i have put it as zero then i can write work done by the pump uh, in place of work done by the gravity i have substituted minus mgh that is because gravitational force will be downwards and the water is getting pumped upwards then we will uh, rearrange this equation and say that work done by the pump will be plus mgh and power of the pump in that case we can substitute it as work done per unit time mgh by time taken how much ever time it takes for m mass of the liquid to uh, go up now uh, this equation itself we can modify it if we consider a very small time dt so in place of uh, time you can put dt and in time dt let us say dm mass is going to be pumped up then we can rearrange the expression which we have over here to this form where the power becomes dm gh by dt and we can club it as dm by dt into g into h that will be the power of the pump to slowly pump uh, water and this dm by dt you can call it as mass transfer rate so mass per unit time of water which is get, bit getting uh, pumped up so you can call it as mass transfer rate or you, you can even call it as mass flow rate or you can simply call it as rate at which uh, um, mass of water is getting transferred it will be in the units of uh, maybe uh, kilogram per second or kilogram per minute uh, different units can be used for uh, denoting this dm by dt sometimes if they tell you uh, 100 liters per second the pump is pumping then that will be dv by dt dv by dt will volume d volume by dt and you can write dm by dt as uh, rho times dv by dt so that substitution can be done if suppose volume flow rate is given so you can write dm by dt equal to density of that liquid times dv by dt okay well so that uh, modifications also i will slowly introduce uh, in further uh, discussions how this can be incorporated now this is a case where the water was slowly pumped now if you have a scenario where uh, when the water is getting pumped uh, it is reaching that uh, overhead level that height h when it is reaching suppose say if it has velocity v then work done by the pump will be equal to mgh plus half mv square that is because in the work energy theorem which we have written over here so in this we will put final kinetic energy as half mv square initial kinetic energy is zero only so if you are going to look at this uh, relation then you will get work done by the pump equal to mgh plus half mv square and that is what i have uh, done in the next case so if kinetic energy is imparted to water at the top then work done by the pump will be mgh plus half mv square or power of the pump will be equal to mgh plus half mv square by time taken if you consider small time dt instead of a large time then the expressions would get uh, modified to this form in place of m you will put dm because in small time dm mass would have been transferred so dm by dt times gh so i have clubbed this as two separate terms so mgh by t in a small time you can write it as dm by dt gh and the other term half dm v square by dt so that's the second term over there so if kinetic energy is going to get imparted to water then power of the pump should be equal to this much and again all these are assuming 100% efficiency for the pump okay right so no let's see uh, another uh, aspect of uh, discussion over here now suppose say you have a scenario where uh, water is going to be uh, imparted only kinetic energy without any height rise so there is a pump over here which is pumping water from let's say some tank is there from that tank the pump is pumping out water in the tank the velocity of water is zero and when it is uh, pumping out the water has gained velocity v not 
that's the scenario then in this case uh, we can write power of the pump that is required will simply be half dm by dt v not square there is no need to do work against uh, gravity so we can simply write power of the pump as half dm by dt v not uh, square and uh, now this dm by dt term which is there which i was uh, talking about previously that is going to be the rate at which mass is removed uh, through the pump and this dm by dt we can relate it to volume flow rate first let me tell you what is this volume flow rate so volume flow rate is the rate at which volume is getting ejected out through the pipe per unit time so we can write it as in a small time dt if dv is the amount of volume which is going to get ejected out we can write dv by dt as the volume flow rate through the pipe now if i assume that uh, velocity of the water that is coming out of the pipe that is v not so in a small time dt so if you look at the diagram below assuming that the cross sectional area for the pipe is a so i can say that a dx will be the amount of volume which will come out of uh, this particular pipe so this water will get displaced by a small amount dx over there so a dx will be the volume of water which gets ejected out in a small time dt so dv will become a dx and you now this expression can be simplified as you now you can substitute in place of dx by dt as v not velocity of the water so volume flow rate will become a v not and if i want mass flow rate now mass flow rate can be written as rho a v not and hence now power of this pump note that in place of dm by dt we can substitute rho a v not and hence power of the pump will become half rho a v not cube so if they are going to give you questions like in fact they have tested uh, these kind of questions in the past it's, it's just scattered here and there uh, i have just uh, compiled everything in uh, one place over here uh, to give the question itself in a theory form suppose say they tell you if velocity is going to be doubled right? uh, at what should be the factor which the power of the pump should be altered so that velocity of the water that is going to be ejected out of the pipe that gets doubled so if velocity needs to be doubled note that power of the pump needs to be made eight times and when you double the velocity the mass flow rate will also double volume flow rate will also double assuming every other factor that is cross sectional area density and all they don't change so if you look at this relation if volume is going to double then velocity speed with which the pipe is uh, the water is going to come out of the pipe that will also double and if v not is going to double mass flow rate dm by dt that will also double right so if they tell you uh, what should the factor be for the change in power of the pump so that it can eject out eject out twice the amount of water in the same time so if it has to eject out twice the amount of water dm by dt needs to be doubled so velocity needs to be doubled if velocity needs to be doubled then power of the pump again need, it has to increase by a factor of 8 times so like this you can uh, answer questions based on uh, amount of water ejected out by a pump relating it to power of the pump okay and suppose say if you have another scenario where there is a, a windmill and on the windmill there is going to be some wind which is going to come and fall on the blades so if you look at this diagram so there is a region i'm assuming cross sectional area a where that wind is blowing over there and it is going to come and fall on the blades and assuming that all the energy that the wind is carrying is going to be imparted to the blades that is an assumption that we are making that is 100% uh, transmission of energy happens from the wind to the uh, blades over there then we can say the rate at which kinetic energy will be imparted to the blades will be equal to half rho a v cube now why i am making this particular uh, uh, statement that is because if i try to write the what will be the kinetic energy of the wind that is blowing i can write half dm v square that as assuming that dm is the mass that falls on the blades in a very small time dt then the kinetic energy which the wind is possessing that will be half dm v square and i'm assuming that the kinetic energy is completely transmitted to the blades then the rate at which kinetic energy will be transferred i can write like this half of dm v square by dt and dm by dt for the wind that can be substituted as rho a v where rho is going to be density of the wind a is going to be the cross sectional area through which that wind is uh, blowing 
and V is the velocity of wind. So if I substitute rho A V in this, then again dm by dt will become, uh, you, you'll get this kinetic energy rate change to be half rho A V cubed. So that is the rate at which kinetic energy will be transferred to the blades or they can say turbine. So turbine will be the word that they will use for, uh, uh, turbine will be connected to this uh, windmill over there. So at whatever rate, energy is being transferred to the blades, that will be the rate at which energy will be transferred to the turbine of the windmill. And so these are different uh, uh, areas. Now suppose say if they are going to tell you a pump is uh, let's say 40 percent uh, efficient so they can give you a pump which is not 100 percent efficient so if they tell you 40 percent efficiency for the pump and let me take an example where uh, water is going to be lifted from one height to another height then the amount of work that needs to be done on the water uh, that we can write it as mgh divided by t that will be the rate at which work needs to be done on the water so this much work is required per unit time but if the pump is 40 percent efficient then we will write something like this let power of the pump be p naught now only 40 percent of this will be efficiently transferred to water so what we'll be saying is 40 percent of the power of the pump that much only gets transferred to water and this will be equal to mgh by t if the water has to be slowly moved to a height h. If additionally kinetic energy needs to be imparted, then we'll write something like this. 40 by 100 p naught. this should be equal to mgh by t plus half mv square by t. So this much on, on the right which you see that mgh by t plus half mv square by t that is the rate at which energy needs to be transferred to the water. So if power of the pump is going to be P naught, only 40% of that power will get transferred to water. So you can uh, calculate what will be the required power of the pump. So required power of the pump will be uh, the power which needs to be transferred to water into 100 by 40. If you are going to evaluate, that will be the actual required power of the pump. Right. So note uh, the additional aspect of when efficiency is additionally given. So you calculate the required power transfer to the water. And if the question says 40% efficiency for the pump, you assume power of the pump to be some P naught. So 40% of that P naught will get transferred to water and required power for water will be this much. If it is a small time, you replace uh, m with dm and t with dt and accordingly you write the relation. Okay, so this is about the different aspects of uh, uh, engines, motors, pumps. It's all the different varieties I have clubbed it in one place and given it to you as a uh, single short uh, um, discussion of different points. Now try to, uh, if you come across problems, make use of these ideas and try to approach the questions. Okay, so yeah, all the very best. I'll see you in yet another video. Bye.